Show and Tell Murder was Channel 8's lead story for many weeks back in the 1980s, and it might generate new headlines real soon. Yeah, the shocking and sensational murder was supposedly masterminded by Sandy Shaw, 15-year-old teenage temptress. Now, after 21 years behind bars, Shaw is on parole. And she gave her first and only on-camera interview to the I-Team's George Knapp. George. Well, of course, you know, it's not for us to say whether Sandy Shaw is innocent or guilty. I mean, she knows she screwed up, and that led to trouble. She was convicted, but we will say she's had a rough road. By the time she was 15 and the show-and-tell murder took place, Sandy had already seen close-up and firsthand four people shot to death. A psychological evaluation prepared years later concluded she suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, the same thing that affects combat troops and should never have been put on trial. But she was tried and convicted. Now that she's out, she wants to reopen some old wounds. I had absolutely no knowledge of the law. My family had no knowledge of the law. And I was kind of in shock because when I went in, I had this understanding that I didn't take anybody's life. So there's absolutely no way that I'm going to go to prison. Sandy Shaw was dead wrong. Not only did she go to prison, but she stayed there many years longer than the average sentence for Nevada's female murderers. The allegation that she took friends out to see the body is largely responsible. You, you know, the show and tell murderer, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I think that people sitting in their position that, that had the authority to let me out, you know, probably did judge me on based on that. This is the version of the story that earned Sandy and two co-defendants life sentences. The young Shaw supposedly masterminded the plan to lure James Cotton Kelly out to the desert where he was to be killed for his money. Prosecutors argued that Shaw bragged about personally pulling the trigger. Recently, information has surfaced which appears to shred key parts of the case. For one thing, both of the co-defendants, Troy Kell and Billy Merritt, have issued sworn statements that there was no plan to kill Kelly and that Sandy didn't participate in the slaying. Sandy says Kelly was a creep, a man in his 20s stalking a 15-year-old girl, asking her to pose nude for him. I was just like, gosh, why won't he just leave? me alone you know I'm not interested I would, never would date him or you know anything like that just leave me alone in 2002 someone sent so, an anonymous mailing to Shaw that exactly contained that. among other things the, documents uh, from the Canadian Mounties about Cotton Kelly and his family Kelly was an alias used by other members of the family several of whom were under investigation for drug trafficking and money laundering it just makes me mad that they had that when I was arrested and I didn't I, wasn't, I didn't know about this until 2002. Are you kidding me? But Kelly's behavior wouldn't justify murder. That part is also weak, Shaw says. Two witnesses testified against Shaw. One was her girlfriend, Stacy Buman, who said Sandy bragged that she had shot Kelly through the eyes, slit his throat, and blew up his car. In later parole hearings, the DA's office stated these elements as facts, proof that this cold-blooded killer didn't deserve to be set free. But the fact is, none of these things happened. The coroner's report proves there was no shot between the eyes, no slit throat. None of that had happened. And when the coroners and, you know, everybody testified, I mean, he was not shot nowhere near between the eyes. His throat definitely was not slit and his car was not blown up. Yet that testimony was used not only to convict her, but to keep her inside. A second witness backed it up, Sandy's friend David Fletcher, who began to testify that he, not Sandy, took people to see the body, and that Sandy never bragged about her role in the murder. In a new affidavit, Fletcher alleges that he was pulled off the stand by prosecutor Dan Seaton, who threatened he would be imprisoned for grave robbery if he didn't support the first witness. Fletcher, intimidated, caved in, he says. Why did he wait so long to tell this story? He told me, he said, you know, there were so many times that, you know, he wanted to come see me or, you know, contact me, but he didn't know how pissed off I was. So he just, you know, I guess stayed away. And the years ticked by. And the years ticked by. Years of your life. Correct. Shaw received a letter from another witness, Thomas Varela, who says he too was threatened by prosecutors and was ordered to lie. Shaw says Cotton I mean, Kelly's roommate at the time though. was a deputy yeah. DA named William Waters, who switched to the public defender's office before Shaw's trial. Sandy's lawyer had never tried a single criminal case before he defended her for murder. Sandy Shaw hopes to make the best of the rest of her life, find a job, maybe settle down. But she also wants to set the record straight. I still accept full responsibility, you know, that his life was taken. I do accept responsibility for that. And um, 
But as far as legal proceedings go, I do plan to proceed um, to go forward with that, and only because maybe more for um, you know I just feel like there's some rights that need you know some wrongs that need to be right. Dan Seaton, regarded as the toughest prosecutor the DA's office ever had here, retired years ago. He called us tonight and told us he's glad Sandy Shaw's out of prison because she's had a lot of tough breaks in her life. But, he says, the witnesses who've changed their stories are just doing it to help Sandy, that he never told anyone to lie on the stand. DA David Rogers said he does not believe Seaton would ever cross that line. Sandy Shaw is in search mode now, sort of searching for a new job, looking for a new life, and also a law firm to help her pursue uh, the issues that were raised in this story. And, of course, we have some additional excerpts from this exclusive interview on our website, including what Sandy said about her personal life now and what she hopes for in the future. Interesting.